Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back. Part 5 now of this build of this beautiful Airfix 124th Supermarine Spitfire Mark 9C. And a beautiful kit it is. Um, it's going together beautifully. Uh, shall I say beautiful again? Just a couple of things we've discovered along the way. Thank you very much to the gentleman who told me about the tail wheel being very tight. And basically the tail wheel is going to slot into this groove here in the back and it is very tight so I would suggest fitting the tail wheel in there before you fit the fuselage house together so you can get a nice sliding fit so that when you come to put it in you're not um, you're not wrestling with it. Um, this bulkhead here uh, I actually scraped some material away from around the outside edges to make it thinner in sections so basically thinned it down this way uh, down in this area down here where it fits in just to make it fit in. I also sanded the bottom to make it fit into the gap that it goes in in the floor better. Um, this bulkhead here, if you remember back from part four, the bottom of it is sort of very squared off and you need to file the bottom to get it to go into the floor properly. And this is all in an effort to make sure it all fits in the fuselage and we get the fuselage closing up. Um, I'm trying to convey some of my experience and, and from all the years I've been modelling if you're going to get a problem with a World War II fighter aircraft or any aircraft of you know, like this design with a single cockpit, this is going to be it, where the cockpit won't go together. You know, even on my big 30-second skull Lancaster, it's very tight in that area. Um, the biggie I found for a big engineering faux pas, I think, there's no location for this rear uh, former here. So basically, it can swing around in there when you glue it in, because when you glue it in, there's only one side in. So what I would probably do is in the instructions is miss out that bulkhead okay so when it comes to step 23 fit D9 don't fit D10 okay D9 has some steps on the side you can see there and they sit up on the side walls so fit D9 don't fit D10 okay so then you come over the page skip step 24 okay and then carry on, you could skip to step 25 as well, do all the rest of it here and then fit this side on. And then when you've got that side fitted, as you can see, you've got a much better location and you can look down along the length, looking along through here. You can look and twist that around and make sure, because if you get that out, it obviously won't go in the fuselage properly. So it would have been nice to have like a peg or a slot or something down here so that when it goes in, you know it's radially aligned so um, that's something else to look for somebody did mention to me in part one or two that a friend of theirs was building one and they had to cut a chunk of plastic out of the firewall i'm not sure if they meant that um and that's where i had to file it and cut it to make it fit in there nicely but that's all gone in beautifully and it sits in the fuselage really really nice no problem whatsoever okay so that's going to go in there fit all up nicely you can see there it's looking lovely get some better light for you looks lovely doesn't it they've done a really nice job of this so oh, i also managed to get these seat belts in if you remember I, I glued the back i left the front loose all i did drop a super glue in behind and then clip them down in so they are now super glued so they sit nice and flat to the seat and if you haven't been watching these are actually why is my lighting so bad today come on these are actually the um the kit seat belts thinned out okay so if you don't want to go to the expense of aftermarket seat belts you don't have to so there we are and they're painted with like a deck tan color and then they've been given a brown wash and then a matte varnish and i picked out drilled through the holes for the um the brass eyelets in there and then picked them out with some brass paint so lots of work but at the end of the day worth it and we've got an out of the box model so if we want to enter it in a contest we've got an out of the box build um so we look in the instructions we've done all of this we've done all of that we've fitted that side on there we've already done this on the back end if you remember i didn't if you go back and have a look i've put some plastic shim in here to space them out because i felt they were sitting in a bit too far and i haven't glued the back end so that i can get correct adjustment when it comes to fitting the fuselage together so we'll get to that part in a minute now the next bit it's saying is to fit all these details in here which we've already done and then fit the cockpit into the fuselage sides so first things first 
something I've discovered on this kit all the way through these ejector pin marks they all seem to have like an edge on them um, you can almost feel it on these it's almost like you've got the the surface of the plastic and then you've got the recess where the ejector pin mark is and around it there's like a raised ridge so you just need to come in with a, a fairly hard stick and you can see there where it's sanding it away and just make sure that you don't have any of them sticking up that are going to interfere with the fit of your cockpit sidewall going in there it's just a you know you really, really should do this with every kit but it just seems on this kit in particular it's almost like the edges of the holes where the ejector pin comes out is slightly radius or the pin is like you know 20 microns smaller so it's just allowing a bit of flash to go in there I don't know but um, it's a really funny one so it's something to look out for all the way through the build I have mentioned it before the other thing of course you must do on here if you remember we put some uh, mig ammo um, masking fluid on these bulbs these bulbs are clear now this has been on here for about three days they suggest on the jar that you shouldn't leave it on there for more than 24 hours but I'm thinking with this being clear plastic not painted parts we may get away with it let's see At the end of the day it's not the end of the world if they don't come off it looks like it's gonna come off yep there we go it's coming I've had a problem before with masking, masking fluid, but that was where I'd, I put it on clear parts that I dipped in future and it didn't like it. So there we go, it's coming off. It's playing hard to get, but it is coming off. I don't want to rip the whole part off, that's the problem. There we go, I think we've still got some on the back side because I can see some blue colour coming through there so I'm going to have a little play with this off camera as you can see we've now got our we've now got our clear bulbs all looking lovely so I'm going to see if I can get something in behind there there we go It's not really held on very tight at all on the back. I'll get something in behind there and get it off. There we go, got that off. So there you can see those bulbs. Don't they look gorgeous? Airplay Airfix, this is just, you have really stepped the game up here, haven't you? So I'm going to glue that cat cockpit side. I've already chest fitted it. I'm going to glue this cockpit side into the fuselage. So I'm just going to put a couple of small drops in the sides there and then fit this in just like so and we've got that square put the top back on the white one we've got that square lug down in there and I'm just gonna put a drop of extra thin just to lock that in place and then I'm gonna put a close peg on here to hold that together and we've got all this at the back here is all gone together beautifully. That's all fitting in its grooves nicely. So we can put a peg on there and hold that in place. Just like so. Don't need to glue the top of these ribs or anything. This is all just going to get sandwiched in the fuselage. In fact, I'm not sure if it needs to be glued in at all, but I don't want it falling out the bottom because there's nothing holding it there. We don't want it working its way out. So bit of glue on the sides just to hold it in place. I wouldn't go mad with the glue because we may need to spread the fuselage slightly for this wing joint here. But um, that's fine like that. So we just tried the other fuselage half in position. And we did this in part four and it all fitted beautifully. So there's no reason why it shouldn't all fit beautifully now. There we go. There we go, everything is closing up lovely. The extra time spent doing that is was so worth it. You can see we've got a lovely seam down there, we've got a lovely seam here, we've got a fine seam at the front here, it's going to need a bit of filler and stuff. We may need to just remove some paint or something from that groove there. 
just to allow this to close up a bit more. Once my rounded blade will just scrape some paint away from in here. Remember we've got a lot of paint and clears and all that in there. We need to make sure we do not let that knife jump out and scratch the lovely green paint that we've got on the sidewall there. Or the decor. Decal, whatever you want to call it. And we can come into the top. But yeah, guys, this is a lovely, lovely kit. Um, it really is going together beautifully. There's a couple of little things, as I pointed out, which, you know, you're going to get with any kit. But honestly, you know, I, I think I paid about £85 for this for a 24 scale Spitfire you know £85 when you can pay sort of I don't know 30 40 quid for a 48 scale one this is an incredible value for money and the quality as well it's just well there we go that's, that's made all the difference just removing that bit of paint so there we are so that's you know it just just shows a bit of care and attention a bit of time spent and um it just it's just going together beautifully and you can see straight away i don't know why i can't get any light down in there it's really strange as soon as i put this near the camera it just goes dark but, uh, there we go so uh, i need to sort my lighting out i've been saying that for years haven't i right so i'm gonna let that dry let that go off and then we'll move on right so remove these clamps i've actually glued this bulkhead up here into the fuselage just to uh, help with getting the fuselage halves together so that should have all sort of pretty much dried off now now the next stage in the instructions they are telling us to fit this part here d6 with d3 now if you remember back in part one was it I fitted D3 to D6 while it was still on the sprue. Tiny, tiny part. Somebody congratulated me for not pinging it across the floor. I'm glad I did it that way because I'll show you where it is. It's all the way down in there. Okay, I'll point to it with my with a pointer. It's right down in there underneath those bulbs. And it's not easy to put in. The reason it has to go in afterwards is because it runs over the side panel there, as you can see. So basically... I, I did that off camera, but because I put that little knob in on the top, I don't know if you can make it out, but there's a little piece on the top that's sticking out. I was able to hold that in the tweezers and drop it in, but trying to get it in there without smearing glue everywhere was not easy. But it's in now, so that's that. I don't know if you could actually glue it in and then slide this up underneath it. Maybe should have tried that, but um, I've also done the battery. You've probably noticed I did the battery way before and fitted it all to this rear bulkhead and that so that I could paint it all as one battery radio whatever it is I'm not sure what it is but uh, I was told it was a radio it looks like a battery to me but uh, anyway um so that's that gone in right now we've got the oxygen pipe with the economizer which is going to go in the here so that's going to fit into that slot in there so I'm going to grab a pointed tool and just scratch some paint off of there Okay, and then we've got the part here, which I've done with all sorts of different blacks and greens and all sorts. So it's, it's got the little brass end on there, and then we've got the pipe clamps, the silver here and green on the top. So that's going to go in. And the reason that has to go in separately now, well, go in now, is because of everything being in the way. So that is going to go in through there. Wow, that's a tight fit in there. Go, it's going in it's going to go in through there I don't like using these pointed tweezers they scratch everything okay it needs to come up this is not as easy as it looks
Wow. There we go. That economizer is going to pop down in there. So you can feel that lock in. So what I'm going to do is get some extra thin in there. Like so. Get it to lock into position. You can feel it kind of clip in and then peg it. I don't mean run away, I mean um, the peg is pulling it off. What about this one? That should hold it. And as you can see, the other ends of it just fall naturally into place. We've got like half the clamp here is moulded into the fuselage half and the other half is, is on the pipe. So a little dab of super glue in there, one little drop of super glue I think will be enough just to hold that. And then down the bottom here are the same. But I just want to make sure that's gone in place and it stays in place. So there we are, we don't want that falling out do we? So we should be able to get a little drop of super glue in there. And then close that one up. So I think I'll use some clear super glue rod. Well, maybe I will use the black. Let's get some. Um, let's just give the applicator a little clean. Normally I would use a cigarette lighter, but with this VMS glue, it sort of remains quite soft. So you can just get off with a knife rather than ruin the end of your applicator with heat. So that's okay, that's still good to go. So I should be able to come in, I'm not sure how much of this you're going to see. But I should be able to come in there, remove that slowly, push that pipe into that and just hold it for a few seconds and it should lock it into position. There we go. And then with a the cotton bud, just soak up anything that's left on the surface and break the part away at the same time. Now VMS state this glue needs 24 hours to fully cure, so you know you don't really want to be pulling it about like I just did. And that one up there. should be able to just put a dab on. Sorry guys, I had to cough then. And then this one here, just going to put a drop in behind, let it go in behind it, like so. Push that over into it. There we go, that's held in place. I'll probably knock it off again now, but I'm just going to get the excess super glue away from there. Just give it another little nudge. And that's in there nice and solid. What a beautiful fit that is. Wow. I've said it before, I think I said it in part two, and I'm saying it again. The designer of this kit, I'll buy you a pint, mate. Honestly, it's bloody awesome. I'm just putting a drop on that one there. Just to help that one. I don't know if I can get a cotton bud in there, but there's a little dab of black glue in there, but I don't think I can get it, get it out. Get one of these ones. Squeeze it down. There we go. I think the easiest thing to do is just get a bit of green paint in there and just touch it in. Got bits of fluff in there now off those Billy Johnson cotton buds. So there we go. So that is all together. 
that's held together that's held together so that is the oxygen pipe and the economizer fitted so we can that's that together so there we are you can now see all going lovely and then so that's that done we've already done the battery we've done all this we've done all that we fitted the tail wheel we're not going to do the door yet because I haven't decided which one I'm going to go for. It's telling me to fit the bulkhead after I've put the fuselage together, which is fair enough. What I'm going to do is just put the fuselage together here. Like so. Right, and I just want to check. I've cut the bulkhead off the sprue. The firewall should I say and that fits in there beautifully so I don't know what somebody has told like I say somebody messaged me in part one or put a comment below the video in part one and said their friend was having a hell of a job and had to cut chunks out of the firewall so I don't know which part you were talking about my friend or if you had a dodgy kit but I haven't cut chunks out of anything and this is all going together like a dream now what they're asking you to do here is fit fit this fuel filler here okay don't do that I mean obviously you're gonna to have to fit it before you put it in but I'm not gonna do that until I've dealt with this seam and all the sink marks are gone and it's all sanded out beautifully because once you fit that fuel filler you won't be able to deal with the seam nicely so what we're gonna do is use that as a guide to make sure it's going together properly Okay, so we'll put the fuselage halves together, glue them together, glue the back together like that. And then what we're going to do is make sure. I seem to have a bit of a misalignment issue. You can see that there. You can see that this fuselage half looks longer than that one. If I pull it up, I wonder if I'm turning the aeroplane into a banana. But um, I'm just going to have to go for it. But I think what I'll do is concentrate on the rear of the fuselage first. And then deal with the uh, the rest afterwards. So I think what I'll do, just to give this a little help in hand, I think I will come along here. And put some of that in there, just to give it a help in hand. And then plump the fuselage halves together, and there we go. That's that done. Never to be seen again. So then, luckily this fuselage springs apart, which is cool. So what we can do now is with our extra thin, we're probably going to lose some of this rivet detail along the spine. But you can see that what I'm doing is putting the extra thin in the gap and then squeezing it and you can see it capillaries along and I can see the glue oozing out. And we could use the gap to our advantage because it gives us a gap to put the glue into rather than have it sat on the surface. As you can see as I squeeze it you can see it oozing out all the way along. A little bit too much on there. When it comes to here because this is going to be covered up with a light we can afford to put plenty of glue in there not worry about the surface because it doesn't matter it's going to be covered up with the light that's also glued that bit there and then this bit here what we do is come in from the end and from in there and glue that together and then hold it and you can see that all the way along there we've got glue oozing out and that's going to be our filler for our joint it will sink back we're going to leave it for a few days but we can see on here now as well there's an issue with the the riveting that you can see on this side you've got all this riveting here on this side there's nothing so it looks a bit odd but once we do all the sanding after the riveting is going to disappear and we have to replace it anyway just checking the front is still going to go together yet yeah. i'm a little bit concerned about that remember my vulcan was the same one side was longer than the other and i'm wondering if this one's the same or is it sort of bent out of shape so we shall see what I don't want to do is bend it out of shape to make it line up so I'm holding that now 
and I want the glue to, to sort of ooze off. If you do it straight away, you risk having your... <clears throat> I should have got some bits of tape off before we started. If you do it straight away, you risk having the glue run underneath the tape and ruining the surface of your model. So what I do is hold it together, let it gel off so that the glue can no longer capillary out under the tape. Okay, and then come along with some tape, stick it down on there, give it a good hard rub, give it a good hard pull, pull it over the top. There we go, and do the same here. Pull it over the top. I'll tell you what guys, that's all we bloody need. I think there's a bit of tape on this. Such a good kit. There we go, over the top, there we are. Right, so that's that held together. So we've now got to concentrate on the tail and the glue's got to come down to there. So what I'm going to do is grab a toothpick. This is something some of you have seen me do before. Pull the fuselage apart. And then I can put some glue in there. Pull the fuselage together. Move the cocktail stick up. You can see we've got it all coming together now. If I squeeze it there, you can see what happens. That's what was happening. If you notice, I'm doing the top first because we want to make sure the top is good. If we get misalignment on the bottom, we have to do loads of sanding and stuff to get it right, then we're better off losing surface detail on the bottom than we are on the top. Okay. You can see there, we can actually move this. You can see I can, because it's all so thin, because there's nothing here, so all that is that supporting it, I can move this tail around, hopefully you can see that. So I can move the tail and get it all beautifully lined up. And then clamp it on the edge. Be very careful to clamp it. You do clamp in the middle, you pull the parts, you pull the seams apart. And there we go. So that's all we're going to do. We're going to let that dry. We may as well do the bit down in there as well. I'm not doing these bottom parts yet because I don't know what's going on with them. And there we are, that's our fuselage glued together with our cockpit inside. So we can take that off. We can see that the bulkhead is still going to fit in there beautifully. So uh, there we are. Right. So I'm going to leave that to dry for at least a couple of hours before we do anything else. Right then guys, just responding to some questions, I'm just looking at some comments that have been left on uh, part two. This is part five I'm filming now, and part two is at the part three will probably go out later today. Um, <clears throat> and uh, James, uh, to boldly go, commented that he wondered if some of the fit issues that people are having were because of their rushing to be the first to get their kit out there or whatever. Um, I don't think he's referring to me because I'm certainly not the first. Uh, but... Um, yeah, I mean, the the comment that he may be referring to is that someone told me that some, they've had to take chunks out of the firewall to get it in. Well, as you've seen, I haven't taken any chunks out of anything. That bulkhead there is fitting in there absolutely beautifully. Um, however, I did shave some plastic from the sides. This is the firewall as such. So whether the person was referring to this or not, you can see that that is perfect. I mean, that's like a Tamiya fit. It's just, it's, it's perfect. You're not going to get better than that. Um, so I, I don't really know what, what he was talking about. Um, but as I've said, the only fit issues I've had are with these two forward firewalls, which I've showed you in part four. Um, the fitting of that rear 
um, former in there. As I said just now, I would change my build sequence next time and put it in. But John has just, I've noticed John messaged as well and said that uh, Airfix have made a fairly simple emission. And I was thinking about how to scratch build something and repair it. But um, because I want to build this out of the box, should I ever wish to enter this in a out of the box competition, I'm not going to do it. But there is a control rod that should run from the bottom of the control column down here. Let me try and get the light in there a bit better. There's a control rod that should run from the bottom of the control column underneath the seat. Now in the in the back here, in fact I'm going to get a torch just to make life a bit easier because the trouble is as soon as I put the model up to the camera, the camera is, is forming a shadow. So in the back there you can see at the base of the seat, if the bloody camera would focus not on the torch, but on... No, it's bloody impossible, isn't it? In the back there, I don't think you can see it, but down at the bottom, I'll show you in the instructions, that'll be easier. On this former here, you can see there, there is a... There is a triangular bracket there that does nothing. And on the bottom of the control column, there is a nubbin sticking out there. You can see it, they've marked it in red. And there should be a rod that goes under the seat and I'm assuming it was gonna go into there. But it's completely missing in the kit. It's not like it's in the kit, not like the Lancaster where it's in the kit but missing in the instructions. It's just not there at all. So it's been an omission. So probably the tool designer omitted it from the D sprue and it just got forgotten. And of course now to, to add it would cost many thousands of pounds. So I don't blame them for not doing it. Um, basically a piece of probably 1.2 plastic rod that would make it about 30 mil. I should imagine it would have been bigger than one inch. I mean if it's going to use a one mil piece of plastic rod if you're going for an inch. Um, and just sort of flatten the end, attach it to there and have it coming back under the seat. It's not really very visible, especially not with my light set up. It's not visible at all. But um, yeah, I'm not going to add it because this is out of the box, but uh, it's something that should be there. It just basically goes under the seat. Go and have a look at some pictures of the Tamiya kit and you'll see what I mean. Um, so what we're going to do now is go on and get this front glued together. Now the back, I've done the underside. I haven't done this bit here yet because I want to see what's going on. Um, but the, the front here I want to get done. So I just, I just taped it together to show you the fit of that firewall. Get rid of that there. And as we can see that now that I've had that taped together with the back glue, it sort of aligned itself. It was way out of line before, wasn't it? So what we're going to do now is pull this together and get it all glued together. So we want to make sure it all aligns. So again, we've got a lovely gap. Now we need to be careful here that we don't capillary glue down onto our instrument panel. I don't, I don't no, the joint's not touching, so that's okay. I just want to get some glue to run in there. If you notice I used a big puddle up there because it doesn't matter because we're going to be sanding all that anyway. But we want to get a nice solid seam down here. Be careful of that. You see the glues run around there. If I touch it it'll come out of my finger and go up onto the surface so I need to be careful not to touch it. But I have used way too much glue on here and I've done that on purpose because I want to really weld this joint solidly together because what we're going to do we're going to work on the wings and stuff for a few days and then this can settle down so that's glue we'll wait for that to, again we're going to wait for that to turn into like a gel i'm going to run some glue around here up in this bulkhead which will again add some strength and hold it all together nicely And what you can do if you want is get in there with some plastic card to back it up and get a nice strong solid absolutely solid welded together joint okay so just touch that on my finger the glue is all gelled off so we'll put the tape on here make sure we got all the panel lines and everything lining up and then pull that across oh it's come off we'll get a new piece of tape A bit longer as well. So 
So we get that on there. There we go, and we'll pull that across and over. And that'll hold that all together. It needs another piece on the front, so maybe this piece will do for the front. There we go. Get that nicely welded together. Make sure there's no step there. Get it nice and straight. And there we are. So that's that all welded together nice and solid and we can put the fireball in. That gives us something to push down on there to get any step out of the top. We've got some beautiful rivet detail around there which we do not want to be getting rid of when we sand the joint. I'm tempted to get a rubber band around here because it's looking like it just wants to pull apart. So I'm going to get a rubber band on there. Nothing too tight. There we go. Making sure we'd have alignment. That's a really important part of the model here. And it's trying to push down in there. So what I'm going to do is grab one of my tools that I have here. In fact, no, I want to use a cocktail stick. Let's grab a cocktail stick and I'm going to wedge a cocktail stick in that gap. And that will push this side up as it's trying to misalign. That's better. Just put it back a bit. Right, so we've got that all welded together nicely now. So it's, it's not only trying to pull apart, it's doing this and it's doing this. So it's, uh, it's a lot of work. You might want to use super glue in here, but just use a couple of dabs, lock it in place and then weld it. Because um, when I say weld, I mean use poly cement because it welds it, it doesn't stick it. Um, it's worth taking the time now to play with it and get it sorted. There we are. Happy with that. Happy with the front. There we go. What I might do is actually just put a drop of super glue you can see how long this stuff lasts as well this um, VMS super glue you can see how long it lasts on the palette that's been on there for about three or four hours just put some super glue in there and that'll just help to kind of lock it some in there as well there we go now we can just leave that to go off and let it do its thing you can see we've got that cocktail stick wedged up into that gap in there and that's just lifting this side to get the alignment all nice so as we said earlier, you know, it's worth taking the time to, um, you know, to just get it all pulled about and in the right place. And it's just, at the end of it, it's just worth it. It's just really, really worth taking your time and not, you know, as, as James said, it's, it's not worth rushing a model like this just to try and be the first one to get your pictures on Facebook or whatever. It's, you know, it's pointless. I've seen people do it with um, with um, group builds and stuff. You know, they 
the announce the group build and as you know that you know the, the group build starts on the 1st of December and you start by putting a picture of your kit up in its box with the instructions bags all sealed you know and then um, and then you do pictures of stages as you go through the model and I've seen people like two days done you know and there's just no way it's just no way you're not gonna build you know uh, you're not going to build a mini art 135th scale tank in two days with all the weathering and all the oils and all the pigments and all that. No. So, uh, there we go. I don't know why people want to be the first or whatever. I don't know. It's, it's nice to be, it's nice to be one of the first to do it on YouTube because it's nice to do the video and come across the issues and convey the issues to the newer guys out there that might come unstuck if they don't know about them. So, and also it brings the comments on from everyone else and they tell us all about the problems they're seeing and their friends are seeing and stuff. So anyway, I've waffled enough. Let me uh, bugger off. Okay, so you've seen the fiasco I had with the wing and here is the wing. And I've now clamped the other side up and got it all uh, centered up. I've just been looking at the comments from that little extra video I did. And a uh, model nerd, who's one of the guys who's building this, who I haven't watched his videos as I say, I don't want to be sort of preloaded with information about the kit. I want to go at it my own way. And it's just it's just something I like to do. A lot of YouTubers do. Um, so basically, uh, we're there and I've got the other side glued up, going off. So we need to now look forward and look at something else to do. Um, another comment I noticed, somebody asked if I could zoom in. Because they said what they're seeing is basically a, a cutting mark with loads of green around it. Can I zoom in? And uh, yeah, I can. So um, here we go. So I'll zoom in. There we go. How's that? That's a bit better, isn't it? So uh, I hope for, hopefully that's good enough. Now I'm not right on the bottom edge, so I'm going to actually physically move the camera. There we go. So that's properly zoomed in now. Let's come out a bit. I like to have the bottom edge just off screen so that I can tell when the camera's nice and square. There we go, just like that. Okay. Right, so hopefully that is good enough for uh, the gentleman concerned. So, here we go with our great big screen and hopefully now that we're like that, now you're happier that you can see a bit more of the detail that I'm doing. My lighting's still not good, but uh, we'll get there in the end. Right, so, um, Let's get the instruction manual out and mess up the white balance completely. Watch everything go dark. Right, so not going to do any of this. Not going to do any of this. Not going to do any of this. Obviously can't do any of that. Obviously not going to work on radiators and stuff. So let's have a look at the engine. Now, something particular to this kit. This is the trouble being zoomed in. Um, something particular to this kit. You can actually build the engine in two ways. You can just build a dummy engine and then build up the actual cowling as I did and, this, and then just have it um, sliding on like this, like I did with the Stuka, okay? Or you can build a full engine and have all the panels removable and replaceable and you can put magnets in them or whatever you want to do. So basically what they're telling you to do here, I did bring this up in the, uh, in the review. So you basically build it up and you follow steps 115 to 135. Okay, 115 to 135 so that's here to here uh, and you fit the cowling that's if you don't want to have a fully detailed engine if you want to build the engine to build the model with a fully detailed engine then you go from uh, you, you you go from uh, 136 onwards so here but what I've noticed if you look here you've got the same parts you've got K39 31 and 38 39 31 and 38 you don't put the nose reduction gear on there, so we're not going to bother with that. And then they're into here, they're into assembling the uh, engine bearers with the, the framework and the, um, the diagonal tubes down here. Okay, which you can see. Now, what they're telling you to do here, if you build the full engine, you go on it and you build the full engine with all the bits and pieces on it and all the little bits of pipe work and all your fine detail, which you're going to paint all the detail on and all your ignition cables and all that and then you build the engine cradle up exactly the same as you do back here you can see 51 68 49 51 68 49 
and then you take the engine out and you add 50 and you take the engine out and you add 50. So what I'm going to do is build the engine up as they do here but without the reduction gear and then build up the engine bearer around it and then leave that to one side to go hard. And then when we need it, we're going to be ready with the engine all built up and seams to clean up and everything that will all be hard. And we'll have engine bearers that are nice and stable instead of having to sit around and wait for them to dry. So, yes, again, we're being a bit bitty. We're jumping all over the place. But I can't do much with the fuselage because it's sat there taped up and I'm waiting for the glue to dry. I can't do anything with the wing because it's sat here clamped to its piece of aluminium bar. So I'm going to get these engine block parts off and we're going to get this main engine block built up as per step 136 or 115 whichever way you go in and go from there so I'll get the parts off cleaned up and then we'll get them put together this is a pretty simple job one other thing guys you'll notice my mat keeps changing from a sort of clean one to a dirty one and what it is when I'm doing painting work and stuff or filling and that I use the dirty one <clears throat> when I'm just building I use this one so uh, these engine halves go together Beautifully, I have just test fitted them. So I got them off the sprue, removed all the sprue nibs and everything. So we can come along and just put some extra thin in there. And to the person that asked, I hope this is better for you, seeing it all close up so you can see what I'm doing. If you uh, prefer this, please let me know in the comments below. Whoever you may be. So that's all going to get like that, squeezed together. I must say this plastic, I do like it very, very much. I think I've mentioned that before. And it does work very well with Tamiya Extra Thin. So that's all gone together really nicely. So that's that. And then just a quick wipe on the sanding stick. And the bottom is cleaned up. It looks like we've got a... Uh, Got a little bit of wet in, the, wet in the middle. We're gonna have a bit of wet in the middle, is it? Okay, so I'm gonna leave that to dry. Can I deal with that now? I'm just wondering if that little seam there, if I can deal with it. Yeah, that's fine. Right, so we can glue the sump in. So we'll just put some glue in there, we'll put some glue in there. And then we'll put a drop here and a drop there and let it capillary around. That's going to be good enough. And then get it all sat even. I'm just wondering here, we've got a, you can see on the back here, we've got a step here. So I'm wondering if it's supposed to be flat on the back or if it's supposed to have a step we can see there it's got a step so that's okay so we can leave that to dry in fact i'm gonna get a couple of pegs on here hold it together as the sump is trying to push it apart we can't have that now can we we'll put one up there as well. whoops daisy Let's get one up there as well. Hold that together. And there we are. So we can leave that to dry. And then we've basically, <clears throat> basically got a block built up. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we can get these engine bearers off, get those three parts off, get them cleaned up. They're going to need a lot of clean up because there's going to be seams on them. So we'll get those cleaned up and then we can get the engine bearer built up onto the engine block and uh, leave it to dry. Right, so we've got these parts off all cleaned up, there's sprue nibs everywhere, there's some um, mould seams to clean up, which are just the norm, part of injection moulding, and uh, there we go. Right, so our engine block is here, that's been there for 20 minutes, so that should be good enough. So what they're asking us to do here, I've just seen some more mould seams. This is one thing, if you've got the air fix, 124 scale typhoon and you've got the cockpit tube in that's mold seam heaven but the mold seams on that are a lot bigger than they are on this these uh, these mold seams are lovely um so the engine goes upside down engine bearer here goes into the side 
So that is going to sit on there, that is going to sit on there like that. So that's how the engine is going to sit in there. And then that one's going to sit on there like that. That one's going to sit on there like that. And then this has got a, you can see it's got like a scallop in the back. There's no scallop on that side. It does have an ejector pin mark there, which I'm going to see if I can sand out. Well, that's going to need some filler in it or something. So that's going to go on there. That's going to go on there. That's going to go there. That's going to go there. And then this is going to slot down in between. Into there like so. Like that. And the engine is just going to sit on top. So. some glue on like that let that capillary down around make sure it doesn't get on the engine so this is basically the same as when you do the when you build the engine completely without just doing the dummy engine then you're doing basically the same thing but what you're doing is actually saving yourself risking having any damage because we've got all those flimsy little bits on there so that is done that is going to be lovely and strong it's got plenty of glue in there and then we can just put that to one side and it's going to stay nice and square in fact i have the engine bulkhead here so i may be able to slot those into those holes if they will fit And let that dry with all this pinned in the right position. There we go. So we can let that dry like that, sat in the bulkhead. So there we go. That's all. Um, that can be left for a few hours to dry before we do anything with it. And it's all going to be nice and um, obviously those pins need some plastic removed from them because they're very tight. They do not want to go into that bulkhead. Oops, that one popped in. That one popped in. There we go. They've all popped in now, so we just sit the engine on there, keep it all square. There we go, we can stand that up and just let that dry. That should be good enough, and then we'll have the the diagonal going in the back. This part here, K50, is going to go into the back there. I see no reason why we can't fit that now because that engine just literally just lifts out. It doesn't need to spring apart or anything. So um, in fact, I think I'm going to put a peg on there because it would appear that it wants to come apart. But if I do that, it pulls it in an angle. There we go. So we can leave that like that and I'm going to grab that part K50 and put that one in as well. Okay, so when I left you last night, um, we glued all these together. I've also done, I don't think I did these on camera, did I? I glued the, um, the cylinder banks together. So they're going to fit on here, like so. The way the instructions are showing you to do it is really strange. Rather than doing that, what they're saying to do is glue the inlet manifold to the to the cylinder banks and cylinder heads first it's, I don't know, it's a bit weird um i've also glued together the center of the inlet manifold a bit of a mismatch on those parts so a bit of sanding required i may give that a cast texture um with some mr surfacer i'll show you how to do that and then when, when it's all assembled apparently there is a problem with this part i'm not sure what's going on there but uh, somebody has told me there is a problem with k47 so 
we'll have a look at that when we get to it. So I've got some, I've, I've gone in with um, super glue and then gone into Mr. Surfacer on the seams to get rid of them. So that's that done. And then obviously I've gone around with some super glue and done the joints in here. So that engine bearer is looking good. I don't really see why they tell you to to do this, to put this on the engine, unless it's to get them that way correctly. I don't know. But uh, anyway, I've got it pressed into the bulkhead. It's only pressed in. It's not glued in, so that'll come out. So going back to this beauty, if you remember, I did a special video on this, which was going to be part of part five. Um, so that's been drying overnight now, and both sides are glued solidly, and we've got a nice straight edge to our bottom bottom of our wing there, so that's good. Um, so that's all done. Right, so now we've got that. Uh, the dihedral, I'm not 100% sure about, but it is, you know, we, we can we can adjust it anyway. But um, it's hard to find a sort of point of reference that's flat. I've obviously managed to get a drop of glue on this one because that one won't come out, but the rest of all come out. So what we're going to do, um, oh, the, I've talked before about these ejector pin marks. Be very careful with ejector pin marks throughout the kit. You can see it on that one there, exactly what I'm talking about. You can almost see... There's like a raised edge around it. It's almost like you've got a hole in the tool, the ejector pin's coming out of the tool, and it's almost like there's a little chamfer on the edge of the hole or something and the plastic's going in there. And what it's doing is it gives you a little raised edge. Now in this position here, it doesn't matter. But whenever you've got an ejector pin mark where you're assembling parts, like if you've got two parts going together, there's ejector pin marks, make sure you sand them flat. I found this throughout the build. So um, it seems like all the tooling has got it. There's this little tiny, tiny edge around the ejector pin marks like the company chamfered them or something um, you can see it on there you can see on there there is a raised edge around that ejector pin mark you can see it on there okay now that doesn't matter because it's not coming in contact anywhere but you can see just how easy it is to get rid of it there we go so there we are right so these bits here need to go in now so that is that side i'm assuming okay so that's going to go down in there yeah they won't go in the wrong way because these hooked doobries on the back a bit of flash on there those hooked doobries on the back they actually are staggered off to one side so they won't go in the wrong side so we're going to fit them in there let's push them down through and then I had a comment from the model nerd who's also building one of these on YouTube. And he said that he hadn't noticed any errors with the spar or anything. He's just glued all this together. But he did know that he had to push one of these over to get it to fit. So because the spar determines the position of these, that's how important it is to get the spar central. And what I was show, trying to show you in that video, and I didn't do a very good job, was there is an undercut. There is a try and catch it in a shadow this is like grey plastic makes it very difficult to see but there is a like a, a recess here there we go you can see it. there's a recess there which goes along and then it comes to an end and then there's a lump on the um on the spar itself and that lump actually coincides perfectly with the ends of that recess so you can get it centered that way um but now you can see when i look here i've got that rib is up against that edge down there, okay? And then the same on this side, that rib is up against that edge on there. So that's how I know it's all even. So what I'm gonna do now is grab some clips and pegs, clamp that in place, got a bit of flash on there, let's get rid of that. I've been scraping and stuff off camera. And we'll get a peg on the back without damaging that hook thing. There we go. And we'll do the same on this side. It doesn't seem to want to go down at the back end, that one. Okay, and then the same on here. to hold that down the 
For some reason that one doesn't want to go down. There's nothing holding it up. Here we go. It's weird. It's kind of springing up even though the, the pegs are pulling it down. Oh, I can see what's wrong here. I've got my peg on the hook. I still can't get the back edge to go down. Let me look at some other way of doing it. Right, what I did in the end there was um, super glue them. You can see there we've got some super glue in there and I've also filled in the little gaps around those hook things with super glue. So they're, they're sort of locked in now with super glue at the back because whenever I pegged them it seemed to lift them up. It's weird. But um, anyway, so got the got them pegged down here now with our reverse. You can see there, I've showed you loads of times how to make those reverse pegs. I learned that from, um, oh, what's his name? Great big guy, big in every way. Big personality, big physique, big modeler. Bristol guy, oh God, what's his name? I can't think of his name now, I'm sorry. He, uh, he showed us how to do them on a video many moons ago. And I took it on board because it makes the, the pegs work so much better there we go so just get that all glued together and that can all dry nice and solid so we'll leave that to dry and then uh, then we'll move on and get these wheel base built, built up right so glue on them is pretty much gone off now so started working on these side pieces these pieces here, these form the rear wall for the undercarriage leg part of the undercarriage bay. Um, and basically I've had to, with this one, you can see I've carved away some material from the back of it because what I found was when I put it in, it was kind of sitting exaggerated. It was kind of sitting like that. It was sitting out rather than, than back flush. Now this one goes in a lot better. So this one doesn't actually need any trimming. Um, so bear that in mind. It may just be my kit, but I very much doubt it. Um, so that's going to go into there. Okay, and that's going to go in there and glue in solidly. And then it's going to fit down into that recess in the bottom there and then glue into the side of this, this uh, rib here. Now I'm not going to glue it to the rib. I'm only going to glue it to the wing. I don't need to do any trimming on that one. <clears throat> so we can put some glue down in there and we'll put some glue in there to get some into that rib. So we can give that a squeeze and then make sure that stays flush in there. What I'm looking at is this area here. You can see where there's a gap where it's pulling apart. We want that to be flush. We don't want anything sticking up. So I'll get some cement into there. Just hold that. Don't want to go pegging anything here because it's all very flimsy and it'll all just fold over if you try and peg it. So there we go. And that's what we're after is a nice flush, flush surface like we've got there. We've got a flush surface there, a flush surface there. And I think that one's going to need some super glue on it because it keeps wanting to spring apart. I may be able to peg it just there because I've got the rib to support it. Let's see what happens if I can reach it with a peg. I don't think I can. <clears throat> no. Um, Just have to hold it until it dries, I guess. I'll tell you what I'll do, we'll put a bit we'll drop a quick setting in there. That'll help. Right, so we'll let that dry and then we'll go on and fit those uh, those ribs. So we've moved on and we've glued in the these outer ribs now and I've got it all clamped up as you can see. I think the secret to this is sectionally just glue it and clamp it, glue it and clamp it. Um and we're going to see at the end of the day if it's all going to be okay. I mean, if it doesn't, if it isn't, then I'll buy some new sprues. Um, 
you know, and, and we'll see what happens. But uh, I think the only thing that could really go wrong here is having the dihedral out. And what I mean by that is having it so that when you look at the front of the aircraft like this, we'll have one wing like that and one wing almost straight, you know, which we get a, a difference in dihedral. But the, the, as I say, the wing is, it's got some flex in it still because it, it's plastic, you know, it's very strong. Um, and it will be extremely strong once we get all these ribs in. So I'm also making sure I'm not putting a twist in the wing. So I'm just, every time I do something, I look along the wing and I'm sort of lining up. You, the, the camera doesn't have the focal length for it, but I'm lining up this edge here with, I don't know if the camera can focus on that edge. Go on camera, focus on that edge. Lining up this edge here with that edge down there as I look at it straight across. So, you know, if it's got a slight amount of twist, that's okay. But um, you don't want anything too silly. So that's all glued and dried up. Um, there we are. So what we're looking for is obviously flush edges because, you know, they wouldn't have had bits and pieces sticking out on the bottom here. So um, let's get those pegs out of the way. So now we can move on and start looking at some other ribs. You'll also notice here I've filled in these two ejector pin marks on each side. Um, I think they're the only two that are going to be visible because we're going to have a rib. Uh, this is for this side, I know that for a fact. We're going to have a rib in there. Okay, and then you're going to have a hatch open here. A hatch open there and a hatch open there. So I don't think any of the others are going to be seen except for those two. So best to um, get and deal with them if you're going to be... In here you've got an ammunition bay going in there. So that's going to cover that up. So this is number five. So we need to get some more off the sprues and start working our way, way outwards. But um, that basically sits there with no clamping or whatever. So I'm just going to put some cement on that joint and let it just glue itself together. Put some on there as well. Let it glue itself to the spar. So there we are. I haven't glued them to the spar here because we may need some movement with the spar, but we'll see how it goes. But um, What I'm going to do is get all this. When it's all glued together, it's all solid. I will go over the big sanding stick and sand it all. You can see marks and seam lines and bits of sprue nibs and that's because I'm going to be doing it afterwards. Right, so that's that in place. So I'm going to get some more off and uh, and get them glued in as well. Okay, so I've got the... By the way, let me know if you like this, um, this closer aspect. This is what was requested from a comment on uh, part two. Get in close and get it into your board. So uh, let me know what you think. Um, <clears throat> So basically I've got these ribs off, so we've got F36, F35, F38 and F42. These two here are parts of sub-assemblies which I haven't done yet, so we'll leave those off for now rather than have bits and pieces sticking out, because when we come to do sanding and stuff I don't want bits and pieces sticking out. Uh, so this one's going to go in, F36 is going to go in just to the side of the wheelbase, so that one's going to go there. I don't think you can get them in the wrong place really, they sort of they sort of fit in lovely. And then this one here, F35, is going to go next to it. So there's one of our gun bays, you can see there. So that's one of our gun bays there. And then here we have F38, which is going to go outboard in there. Nope, it's not It's going to go there, is it? Okay, it's going to go in there. F38 is going in there, yeah, and then this tiny little one on the end, F42, it's going to go on the end of the spar there and sit in like that. So all very nice, we'll glue them in, make sure they're nice and parallel to the to the edge of the gun bay, because that's what's going to be seen if we have the gun bay doors open. I haven't decided yet, I probably will. So we can just drop some cement onto this one. go get that one glued in in fact I'm actually wondering now with that one glued in am I going to be able to get that wheel bay in yeah we'll squeeze it in there somehow whoops I'll just drop that one off the end yes it made it all the way to the floor so I'll pick that one up in a minute and then we're going to glue this one in Again, I'm not gluing them to the spar. So that one's sitting in there. Do 
and then that one's going in there again you see this is what I was saying everything's so loose and baggy it's difficult to to get everything lined up nicely um, you can see this one here it's, it's hard to get them to know if they've got to be vertical or not or parallel I think I think <clears throat> once again we use these wonderful tools this six inch caliper to check they're parallel yes they are and then with the wheel bay we'll have to probably just cut a little angle off the end of those tabs or something we'll get that in after but I want to get all this in first because obviously I want to make sure those wheel bays go in because I don't want any edges out here I don't quite know why I haven't glued the wheel bays in yet but uh, I'm sure there's a reason for it in my little mind somewhere where on earth did that rib go it's on the floor I shall find it and then I'll come back okay I've got the ribs in now the sort of ribs on their own without anything added to them um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put those, those ammunition bays in but without the ammunition and then we've also got these spacers going in as well so I've also been looking at this I've been looking at how the fuselage fits the wing and it all fits very nicely but um, as you can see I've got this engine bearer fitted to the bulkhead and I just wanted to see how big it was going to be really and it's it's quite a big old bird uh, but I've also noticed that the way this kit is designed the that bulkhead is fitted better into there than it is into the ah okay so it's got those pins are coming through the engine bearer right so those pins are coming through the engine bearer from the engine bearer through the bulkhead and into two holes in the wing spar so if you have your wing spar off to one side as we as i said in that little extra video I did it is going to start to affect things so because what's happening is this bulkhead is dropping down into the aforementioned recess if I get this off of here which is going to be easier said than done I think it's a very snug fit the bulkhead is going down into that recess and it does look bloody gorgeous it's very nice I think we're gonna to have to fill those ejector pin holes there so that's going in there like that all right so these cutouts in the spar are determining the left right position of that bulkhead so if your spar is off center as I thought it's going to pull your fuselage one way or the other so I'm very glad now that I started to play with it because I had it probably a good half a mil that way so it would have it would have pulled the fuselage off and um, which would have affected the fit round here and the overall look and everything so if you have started your kit and you've got it you've got this off center you might want to start trimming some plastic away from these these four lugs i'll point them out with a cocktail stick these four here one two three four because the bulkhead goes into there and that's what locates it left to right so there we go and that fuselage is going to sit in there like that okay so basically your bulkhead will be glued to your fuselage so you will drop that in and that spar will go up into that slot there in the fuselage and all will be good as i say that is what is locating your fuselage left and right you can see the fit back here is bloody lovely really really nice so uh, what a beautiful little model this is if only they'd put I wish they'd have put a couple of holes in here or a couple of pegs or something to locate the spar in the center so you could clamp it glue it in the center and then work on your wings afterwards I think that would have been a lot better they could have perhaps put you know something like that like that u section there for the landing light they could have put something like that in the in the bottom of the wing so that these two large lugs here fell down you know went down into it but um in fact i'm not even sure what they're for because those 
those two holes there, these two holes here, that one and that one, are where the engine bearer goes in, as you can see here. That's where the engine bearer sits. And I don't really know what those holes are for. We'll have a look in a minute. Let's see what they're for. But they're probably for something because they've they've made them quite strong. I don't really know. Um, so yeah, it's all good. It's all very, very good indeed. And it looks like it's all going to fit lovely. Looks like it's all going to go together like a dream. Let's hope so anyway. Right, so we're going to go to this segment a little bit backwards. Um, just look in here. How this fuselage fits the wing. And it's absolutely gorgeous. You can see, you know, this is all just dry fitted. Nothing's actually clamped down or anything, but it's lovely. Um, I would perhaps suggest if we can, what we'll do is we'll put some plastic card on the back of this wing here and then when we put it down we've got somewhere because it's just a, a sort of you know a butt joint with nothing so I, I might put some plastic card behind there to give this something to go down onto obviously not where it's going to be seen which is only that little bit there in the front of the wheel bay um, in fact if we build it if we do this before fitting the radiators then we should have no issue whatsoever we can get into there but um it's it's uh yeah it's lovely it's very nice indeed and then of course we could always put tape on the wing tips and pull it up you know where you put the tape across and just pull them up but um it really is lovely you can see it's easy to close those gaps up so uh there we go so that's that. Oh, the fuselage, I've taped up the cockpit now and I've sanded down this, this, this seam on the spine. It's, there is no filler, no missile service or anything in there. Uh, underneath it's going to need something. There is a slight bit of misalignment there, but that's my fault probably. Um, and then we'll have to re-establish the rivet detail. Something I have noticed, which is a bit of a whinge, uh, you can see on here, if I can catch it in the light, you can see the rivet detail in there is quite big and bulky and yet over here there's nothing so I think I might just fill all that get rid of it um, because it looks horrible I'm not sure if you can see it there but it, it looks the river detail on there looks horrible it's been it's not slide molded it's been done like this so the the rivet dot has become like a, a line in the surface and it's it's not nice at all. I think I'll probably just paint some Mr. Surface River and get rid of it just along that ridge and then just perhaps put a couple, a couple of rows of rivets along myself. Um, under here we just got to re-establish some rivets there, that's no problem. So, very very nice, all coming together very very well. The other thing I've done, I've gone on and glued these, these are the cannons. Make sure you get the right ones, these are on Sprue G. There are some on Sprue N as well and they're obviously not for this kit. Um, but these are going to fit into here. I'm not sure how well they're going to fit. There we go. Lovely. Uh, so you can see they're going to fit in there. Lovely. I know a lot of you will be saying, you can get brass ones at end. Yeah, but this is going to be out of the box build. So I'm not doing that. One thing I, one issue I did have, one of them went together absolutely gorgeous. Really, really nice. And the other one, it's like one half is bigger than the other. So you can see I've got a step, a male step there and a male step there. So instead of it, it's not like that, it's like that sort of thing. So plenty of sand in, we'll get that, we'll get there right. Um, <clears throat> I've also filled in those ejector pin marks in there, just in case when we look at it, because the engine bearers are going to go in there. So when with the engine covers removed, we may be able to see down in there, I'm not sure. But I thought just for what it takes, drop a super glue and five minutes sand in, we may as well do it. So um, yeah, all in all, very, very nice indeed. These wings... The upper wings, it's just, it's a million miles away from the Hellcat. I'll show you now. It just falls together. It is beautiful. Um, now, whether it falls together because of all the extra time and fuss of faff I've done, but there's your lower wing. All the ribs are in there. I haven't put the little pipes on and stuff because I don't want getting knocked off. Um, I'm going to get some Mr. Surface Radio, deal with all these joints, and then if we have the gun bays open, they'll be looking lovely. 
look how that wing fits on there just drop it on it's just it's just absolutely lovely the ejector pin marks we have in the flaps here which you looked at in the review I, I forgot to mention them but somebody told me I forgot to mention them um, they're sort of pretty much hidden you can see there they're pretty much hidden you, you might want to do these last few here but uh, and there's a one there you want to get want to get rid of if you're gonna have your ailerons down but um you, know, you look at how they go together and you can see how they line up with the gun base you know the Hellcat was a bit of a nightmare wasn't it getting all to sort of stretch over and pull over well mine was anyway but um funny thing with the Hellcat that kit was made in India of the old softer airfix plastic and it's clear um, from other kits I've seen if you're watching this in your intro 24 scale kits I know that um, somebody commented to me that they um, they had an issue with fitting in I think it was the second bulkhead there's a bulkhead behind the pilot seat and then another one and they had an issue with fitting that one well I've got three kits and all of them have an issue with fitting the main one and the one behind is absolutely fine and then somebody else um, emailed me and said that their uh, tail wheel bulkhead wouldn't fit but all the others fitted perfectly so I think there's obviously some quality control issues with that kit um, and with shrinkage and stuff I've also had people message me saying that the fuselage on their kit the fuselage halves were flattened and I, I, I kind of wonder if the person on the machine it was taking the parts out of the mould, was sort of taking them out and putting them down on a table, you know, like that, and then taking the next one out and laying it down on top. So the ones at the bottom slowly got flattened. But um, I think all the kits, I think everyone managed to build them and get around it. It was, it was, you know, it it wasn't a, um, it wasn't like an issue they had with the Typhoon with the canopy when that had to be replaced. It was just, I think it was just a quality issue that had to be dealt with. And um, I have actually asked for some spares from Airfix and they've come back to me and said they can't supply me because the kit is no longer in production. So if you've got one of those Hellcats, hold on to it. If you want one, go and get one now. And if you wonder why I'm telling you that, go and have a look how much a Mosquito will cost you these days. Even though they did a rerun of the Mosquito only, what, a year or two ago? Uh, have a look how much they are now. <laughs> so if you want a Hellcat, go and get one. I'll go and get... um. A typhoon as well so I've got three of each because I'm just greedy right I'm gonna call that a day for this video but lo and behold this this all goes together the wing is lovely and rigid it really is nice I mean the way it fits together what we will do quickly is just have a quick look I did have a look these wheel bays go in easily um, you can just drop them in I think probably because of their shape they just drop in easily like that so that's great um, so let's see what these wheelbase look like before we go to bed. Oh, look at that. Hey. There's lovely sea, isn't it? See, beautiful luck. You know. Look at that. <laughs> Gorgeous. Great job, Airfix. Well done. You've done us proud. Right. So I don't think I mean to check those, those seams that I filled in. I wonder if there's supposed to be a panel line there. I've got to check that out. But um, I couldn't leave them as they were. They were, just, they were quite a big gap. So I, sanded, I did that in part three, didn't I? So, um, and, and when you glue these wheelbase in, we'll cover this when I do it. But you need to make sure, like exaggerated, you don't want that. You don't want the wheelbase sticking over. You want it all back, which is why I trimmed away plastic from the inside. All right, so... I shall see you all for part six and we'll get these wings finished up. I think in the meantime, I'm going to put some Mr. Servicer around these gaps in here. I've already put super glue down in there and in there because when you put this part in here, this rib, this angled rib, you get a great big gap down the side of it because the slot is like twice as wide as the, as the actual part that's going in it. So um, it's worth bearing in mind. So I will see you all for part six. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Thank you very much and bye for now.